5 volt pixels, 1 string of 1024 pixels. Check it out. Want to know how I did it? Hi. Welcome to Can a Spader Christmas. All right, this video took a whole lot longer for me to put together than I thought it was going to take. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, things have been a little busy, but it, the, the main problem has been the heat. It has been 311 degrees outside for the last two weeks. 311 degrees, Kelvin. Come on, it's Texas. It's always hot in August. Doesn't mean I like it. Mental note, in August, do computer tutorials. Add to that, this is my first big prop with five volt pixels, so it took a little while to figure out the power injection requirements. Um, uh, filming it adds a whole lot more time to everything, but this is actually a great example of a prop that will show you a that you need power injection and then i'll show you how to deal with that so what i have is two four foot by eight foot matrices 512 pixels each and i want to put them side by side so it's 1024 pixels i'm going to do one string of five volt pixels now the the first thing i needed to do was figure out how to wire all this up so i went into x lights and created a model Okay, let's start with a standard matrix. And if you'll notice that it's uh, horizontal, 16 strings, 50 nodes per string, and one strand per string. So this is node one down here. It goes all the way over to here. And then the second string starts and goes over here. And you can check that by looking at the wiring view. Let me expand this out. And so this is looking from the back of the matrix. So here's node one, goes over to node 50. This starts the second string and goes over to 50 of the second string and on up. Well, if I want to put two of these next to each other, I would have to put a connection at every one of these to go to the next matrix. I don't want to do that. So let me change this. I'm actually going to have 10, 24, and I'm going to have 64 strings, and I'm going to change this to 1. So now we get something that looks like this. So if I look at the wiring view now, and this is maybe a little difficult since it has so many. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see that. Let's go with 512 just for now. 512. And that would be 32. So that's half of it. So... Expand again. So we start with node 1. Wait a minute. That's still not right. Oh yeah, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it just keeps going. So it's one string, so you don't have the, the string numbers. And uh, there's 512 pixels. But I still don't like that wiring, so I'm going to change this to vertical. And we'll save it. Now we'll look at the wiring diagram. And now we see we start with 1, we go up to 16, 17 starts here, so now we have one string that, that goes to 512, and then the next one will be 513, and it'll be wired just like this. So that's exactly what I want. That way I have one connection between 512 and 513, and then when I go to store these at the end of the year, um, or at the end of the season, 
I can just break the connection here. I can store them easily. I don't have to have a connection for every one of these. So that's what I wanted. So now we'll go to 1024 and 64 4. So that is our matrix and you probably won't be able to see anything here. <laughs> well, let me take that off the screen. Yeah, you can. So again, start in the from the front, lower left, from the back, lower right. 1 to 16, 17 to 32, 60, uh, 33 to 48, and on and on and on. But it's one continuous string. Now, in order to pull this off, we'll have to do power injection and the technique that I learned, uh, and I'll show you this a little bit later, but the technique that I learned from Bill Porter at Expo was to uh, power inject at every one of these loops. Now, if you have a horizontal uh, matrix, your, your power injection would be on this side, but uh, since I changed it to a vertical matrix, um, I'm going to put my power injection down here. You could also do it up here. It doesn't really matter wherever you want to do it. But since this is node one, this is where the power connection is going to come in. So I'm going to po inject power on all these loops down here. So now that I have it modeled in X lights, we can get to the fun part, which is punching the pixels into the matrix. Now I did use a glove, uh, and, and this really wasn't providing a whole lot of protection. This part of my hand was getting kind of sore because that's the way I was kind of pushing it into the matrix. Uh, so I got a full size sheet of paper towel and folded it over and put that in the glove that acted as kind of some, you know, added some padding to it. No problems after that. The other thing you'll notice is that these pixels come in 50 node strings or strings of 50. And so I would punch those 50 in and then I would connect up the next string, power it up to make sure that all the, the pixels were working. So the controller was set to a, a test pattern of a white ramp. And uh, so it would turn all the pixels white and then it turns them down, turns them up white, turns them down. You'll notice as the string gets, as I get toward the end of the string, instead of turning white, they're turning red. And so what that means is they're starved for power. And so I'll show you how to deal with that too. So now let's punch some pixels.
Now I said earlier that 5 volt pixels come in strings of 50, so I decided to remove the pigtails and solder the ends together to form one long string. The advantage there is to reduce the possibility of moisture getting into the connectors, since there's really no connectors anymore, and I get some free pigtails. For that, I have extra pixels, and there's a fair amount of them. So I'm gonna ahead and cut cut this off, and I just choose a place about halfway in between, and so that's about where we want to cut. I probably should have unplugged it first. As you can see, there's a power problem. This is one string of 512 5 volt pixels. As the pixels on the left get brighter, they drop enough voltage so there's not enough voltage for the pixels on the right. So they turn red. They should be white. As the ramp goes down, the pixels on the right look better because the pixels at the beginning of the string aren't dropping as much voltage. To fix this, I'm going to use the suggestion Bill Porter gave me at Expo to inject power. Now basically the idea is to run another set of leads off that same power supply through an inline fuse. Uh, and inject power at all the loops. Basically, you connect those wires to the power rails uh, at the bottom of each loop. I used an X-Acto knife to separate the wires a little bit and then just spread them apart. Use a set of wire strippers to break the insulation, but don't cut the wire. Do the same on the power injection wires and then solder them in place and then tape up everything with electrical tape. The test pattern is a white ramp, so it goes up to 100% and then goes back down. I inject power at the next loop and we go through all the ramps again. The more power injection I add, the better the pixels on the right do. Here's a quicker version of that. I put a 40 amp fuse in my power injection holder just to do some tests. Uh, I ran it up to 85% brightness, so that was about, by my calculation, 40 amps uh, total. I don't think it was that much. Didn't blow the fuse, but the wires started getting warm. Um, and I run them at 30% anyway, so I'm not really worried about that. I did notice though, I have two different sets of pixels and, and the first one looks very white, uh, at, at white. The, the, the one on the right has got a slight pink tint to it. And so I thought that was a power injection problem. So I ran another set of power injection wires to, you know, straight to the power supply through another fuse and uh, didn't really make any difference. So I think it's just a difference in manufacturers. But what running two different power injections will do is now I can reduce the fuse down to probably 15 amps or so, and I won't have any problems there. 
For this prop, I think I'm going to have to lengthen some of the EMT a little bit. The, uh, the chroma mesh is touching the ground, so I want to raise it up just a little bit. And uh, I don't think it's flat all the way across, so I may need to widen it a little bit as well. Uh, to give it some stability, I think I'm going to use rebar in the ground and then just do like a zip tie on all the pieces that are vertical. That'll keep it from going back and forth like this. I already have EMT uh, holding it front and back, so that should be okay in the wind. Uh, maybe that's a good Labor Day weekend project. That sounds pretty good. Uh, I hope you found some of this information useful. If you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Uh, so I got six of these and so they, I got five of these when I started relaxing a little bit and then BAM!